All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. And surely Allah is the friend and protector of the righteous. And I bear witness that Allah is one and has no partners. And that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, is his servant and his last messenger. And may Allah always and constantly send peace and blessings to Muhammad, to his family, to his companions, to all those who call to his way and establish his sunnah to the day of judgment. As to what follows, my beloved brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, it is a great privilege for me to be here today uh, with you in Abuja. Today I want to come to you not as an academic, not as a professor, not as somebody from a high level, but I want to speak to you today as your brother, as your brother coming from the field. Because today, Muslims need to be very sincere and very honest with each other. We need to talk to each other, not just from the mind, we need to talk from the heart. Because the time is short, and this world is going through tremendous changes today. The world that you see, the world that you know, will not be the same in the next 10 years. The environment now is turning on humanity. Everything is turning around on us. And so it is crucial for us to be very honest and sincere and very straightforward. This month of Ramadan is the best time for us as Muslims to speak very clearly and to reflect on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reflect upon what is happening around us. And Allah Azza wa Jal has told us in His glorious book, Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudan lil nasi wa bayyinatin min al-huda wal furqan that this month of Ramadan is the time in which the Qur'an was revealed as a guidance to humanity and clear evidence from the guidance and from that which separates truth from falsehood. And so this condition, this state that we are in today is a crucial state uh, for us. It is a special condition because we are doing imsak. We are abstaining from food and drink and desire during the day. People around the world are doing imsak for many reasons. There are some who abstain for health reasons. They do not eat certain foods because they have an allergy. And so the doctor says, if you are allergic to peanuts, the doctor said, you have to stay away from nuts. And you have to read the package to make sure there are no nuts. If you have diabetes, you must stay away from sugar. And so you will do a form of imsak. You will abstain whenever you see this certain type of food. There are other people who do imsak for social reasons. They want to lose weight because they want to put on their jeans real tight. They want to wear the latest styles. And so for beauty reasons, they do not eat food. Other people stay away from food for political reasons. And they call it a hunger strike. The great Mahatma Gandhi of India, he was fasting in order to unite his people and to get the message out to the world. In some religions, they fast in order to punish their bodies. They believe that by holding, uh, staying away from food and drink, that they will literally burn away all of their sins. But Islam is the last religion. It is the last way of life. It is the final testament to mankind. And in the message given to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu we have the best of all the Anbiya. And so Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed to us the reason why we fast. It is not for social reason, it is not for health reasons, it is not for political reasons, it's not for beauty. Allah told us 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم شهر رمضان يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون O you who believe fasting has been prescribed on you as it was prescribed on those who came before you in order that you would have taqwa so um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us O you who believe fasting is prescribed on you as it was prescribed on those who came before you in order that you would have taqwa the consciousness of God and taqwa is al khawf wa raja it is fear and hope it is a combination you can take this away one more. it is a combination of fear and hope and this creates a type of consciousness it's the consciousness of Allah it's the the awareness of the presence of Allah knowledge of Allah is everywhere Allah is the most powerful and so this taqwa gives us this consciousness and it gives us this understanding and this condition that we are in is a special one because we are not eating we are not drinking we are not controlled by our animal desires we are now holding ourselves and this is similar to the angels al malaika because the angels as allah describes yaf'aluna ma yu'marun they do as they are commanded they do not eat and drink they do not have desire like human beings and so in a sense we are in a condition like an angel and we can look at uh, society we can look around us and we can understand what is happening in the world today and so uh, taqwa is a special condition for the believers what does taqwa lead us to what is the importance of taqwa today muslims today in the world are feeling under a lot of pressure we feel in many parts of the world that there is a type of military pressure our countries are under attack if you look in the newspapers they are writing things against islam and so in many times we feel that we are under a lot of pressure we feel like sometimes there's no way out and that is the beauty of the taqwa we are gaining in ramadan because allah tells us in surah at-talaq in verses 2 and 3 a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim wa man yattaqillaha yaj'al lahu makhraja wa yarzuqu min haythu la yahtasib wa man yatawakkal 'ala allah fa huwa hasbu inna allah balighu amri qad ja'ala allah li kulli shay'in qadra allah tells us and whoever keeps his duty to allah whoever has taqwa allah will make a way out for him and provide for for him from where he knows not and whoever depends upon allah allah is sufficient for him surely allah will gain his purpose and he has made a limit for everything qad ja'ala allah li kulli shay'in qadra there is a limit to oppression there is a limit to exploitation there is a limit for everything and so this condition in the month of ramadan is a great blessing because it gives us the taqwa it gives us that consciousness which as allah explains will give us a makhraj a way out from all that we fear from all that is around us secondly we are blessed to be companions or be followers of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is the last of all of the great messengers prophet ibrahim alayhi salam prophet musa prophet isa alayhi salam the great anbiya who came 
this is the final message. And his message will last until the day of judgment. 